Across the 10 years for our interest costs, um, we've been able to take um, additional swaps and fix those rates for a longer period, um, and that's allowed us to take advantage of those savings. So overall, the recommendation is a reduction in um, costs and an increase in, um, or an increase in the surplus of four hundred sixty-six thousand uh, dollars for the two thousand and fifteen-sixteen, with ongoing um, impacts across the ten years as a result. Okay, so <coughs> can I just uh, check with you then? Those are. Um, adjustments you've made based on um, changing information since the draft was prepared. Do you, before we get into determining whether we want to reinstate a city safe budget or <coughs> any other matters, do you need us to do to resolve anything to do with paragraph 66? Um, you, Your Worship, if uh, Council were to um, take that recommendation, then recommendation B1 would be uh, the one appropriate one to do, and that would allow us to set a base for the budget going forward if, uh, when we consider other matters, including the two other recommendations. Be to what you're saying is to move a resolution that those adjustments be accepted, and then we can move into deciding whether we want to, um, how we want yep. to deal with other um, other requests, etc. Yep, that's right. correct. And okay. just just for clarity, Your Worship, um, it's recommendation 12B1. Yeah. Uh, okay. Right. So, councillors, we're not focusing on reinstating budgets or anything. We're focusing on uh, paragraph 66 and some adjustments that the staff have picked up. And, and some of these look familiar, of course, because we've discussed them in the Finance Committee. So, Councillor Mallet, you have a question? Uh, uh, yes, it is a question. Just to be clear, these are things we have no control over uh, other than the pool staff costs. Is that right? Or is that a legislative requirement? Or is that us just upping our standard of um, service? Um, <coughs> it, it does have a, a, a small increase in the level of service that we're providing, because it is about the safe levels. Um, but I think um, I may refer that to the general manager. So, so uh, I think, before you answer that, I think the question was more to do with we don't have any influence over these yeah, things. Yeah. They're a matter of fact, <coughs> apart from a level of service issue to do with pooled staff costs. That, is that right? That's correct. So I guess the point is there's not there's no debate about some of these things. It's happened, and you're just reflecting the figures, mm. except for the, the staff. The only thing we actually have any any ability to change is the staff cost, the pool staff cost. Is that right? Is it correct? That, that's correct. Right. right. <clears throat> so, um, Lance, could you just respond to the pool staff cost? Sorry, Your Worship, can I just can challenge you? on that? No. Sh so I'm going to just complete Councillor Mallet's question first. Which was just to clarify about the yeah, full staff you. costs. So, can you just do that, please, Lance? Uh, through you, Your Worship. Um, the staff costs, it's been alluded to in the Finance Committee. Um, I think Councillor Mitchell <coughs> brought it up when there was a um, uh, showing up staff costs around the pools being higher than what's been budgeted. Um, we've experienced um, higher numbers this summer. Uh, we've done a full review of our <laughs> rosters at the end of the summer and looked at our um, safety standards, the number of um, lifeguards that we have at the pools. What's been happening is we've been having to pull in senior staff to cope with um, uh, the amount of people and behavioural issues at the mm -hmm. pools. Um, for me, it's a health and safety issue, not only for our staff. <coughs> um, we're at capacity. Uh, we've, we're finding that with, um, with our roster that uh, our staff are finding it difficult to take leave. Um, if you have a reasonably skinny um, staff structure on a rostered basis that people are away and sick and taking annual leave and that sort of thing, it's, it's difficult to cover it at times. So we're saying that we actually need to um, have a few more people so that can actually cover that. So we, um, A, look after our, uh, our obligations as a good employer and also the safety of the public um, going forward into okay. other busy periods. All right, thanks for that. A further question on that, Councillor? Just on that, thank, thank you, Lance. Um, <coughs> is putting more staff in the right way to deal with this. My understanding is there's some, you're saying, behavioural problems. There, I, I understand it was gang-related stuff, um, et cetera. Isn't there a way to deal with that is just trespass those people and say you're not coming back in? Um, we, we do that. Yeah. Um, but there's, um, there's a whole range of interventions that can happen. 
um, but um, it's not only for those sorts of behavioural issues, it's also about the amount of people in the swimming pool, surveillance of the people in the pool, um, safety for, each, um, for people using the facility in the right way, um, as well as safety for the public if there's patrons not using the facility in the right way. Um, we're taking a lot of advice from Kelvin and also from the police on that. It's, it's, there's, a, there's about five different prongs to that. Um, some of it is around uh, staffing, uh, but my first concern is around about safety of people in the pools or in the facilities, um, um, but also the people who are outside, you know, in the outside areas and, and doing what they're doing, having picnics and that sort of thing, and if there's anything untoward happening. So it's a range of things. Okay, thank you. Councillor Wilson, you had a question? Yes, you, you <coughs> Worship. I just want to get a clarification in regards to... Um, Councillor Mallett had suggested that really uh, under... Uh, point 66, uh, page 10, that these are things that we that we really don't have much choice over. But surely the fact that we've lost a Minister of Justice grant, we could choose not to replace that funding and we could <coughs> choose not to uh, add an additional amount of uh, lifeguards. So those yes. subjects are for debate, right? No, so Councillor Wilson, we're not dealing with putting money back for City Safe. This table reflects the fact that Ministry of Justice funding has been will be removed from July. Yes, but I, I refer we're going to, to go the on point to sixty seven. We're going to go on to uh, decide about putting budget in to replace justice after we've dealt with these issues. Uh, so we're not dealing with that at the moment, all right? Just to clarify, um, basically we're looking at 66, and 66 is taking the revenue out from the, the funding right. and taking the costs out, <coughs> matching that. So basically 66 is about reducing both the revenue side and the cost of providing that service. Once we've agreed that, then we'll have a separate debate about whether we put anything back in and what that costs us. Right. And you're right about the <coughs> staff cost, and that was the question. We do, that is something that we can decide or not decide. So, so probably it should not have been in this table. Um, so, are there any other questions on this particular table? Yep. Yes, Councillor McPherson. Yeah, the parking revenue, Your Worship, the second item there. Um, I just want to test the um, value of that um, reduction in income. So, um, Chris, can you um, answer those questions? Well, I have, yeah, can I haven't asked the question yet. No, I, I know you haven't answered the question. I'm just looking as a courtesy, preparing Chris as a question. So, can you answer it, please? Thank you. Chris expresses <coughs> every time, I think. For the last um, four or five years, I can't be exact on which of those two, every estimate that we've had in our annual plans and LTP for parking revenue has been, has been an overestimation. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to check how rigorously this was checked and therefore how accurate it is, whether it, we're still overstate, there's still a risk of it being overstated. Um, we've had a, a very thorough review of the parking. I've got in front of me the, the data for the, five, the last five years, so we've done some um, you know, trend information and looked at it and just um, 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 gathered all the information that we can. Um, um, so we're comfortable that that's our best guess, and it is a, a, an estimate. Um, <coughs> um, it's our best estimate of the parking revenue, looking at all the trends over the last five years. Um, if you look at the five-year trend, we did go through a period around about the centre place redevelopment where a lot of our budgets um, proved to be wrong, and I think it was about people coming and parking in the CBD. So just around that period where we had a lot of activity we had some big dips um, in actual revenue versus our budget, uh, but a lot of our budgets um, um, ha have sort of stabilised in terms of the trend information. So we're as comfortable as we can be that we've done a good process. Would you say it's a conservative estimate that looks led to the 100k figure, or a medium? It, it's probably a realistic estimate. Would, so, would it not be better to be conservative, uh, given the history of that particular line? <coughs> I, I think in, in, in the last couple of years, the, the estimates um, have been over-optimistic and they've been pulled down through the last um, couple of annual plans. So I think um, th this is realistic and probably on the side of conservatives. Okay, thanks. Um, you wish if I had uh, just... I did have another question on the um, 
the Ministry of Justice one, just the reason for the cuts there, to know the background and what we did about the cuts, if anything, once we were informed of it. Everyone's looking at everyone else. Um, thank you. The, the reasons for the cuts are really just reflection of the public service squeeze that's on. Um, it's been signalled for a long while that the Ministry of Justice funding would be reduced to these programmes. Um, I think we did very well to hang on to the funding as long as we did. So, so what did it reduce from and to oh, it's, in it's, gross terms? In this particular programme, it's reduced to 120000 Yeah, no, I can see that. So what did it reduce from and to? No, 120000 out of $12 million or out of 130000 I don't know. In terms know. of their national budget across the country? No, no, in terms of what we used to get and what we're now going to get. Well, I'll hand over to Kelvin to that level of detail. <laughs> we, we, we receive a total of 120000 which is made up of two separate grants from the Ministry of Justice. We've lost the funding for both grants. So we've lost everything? everything. That's correct. Yeah, I just think that context, Your Worship, would have been better to, or the Chief Executive to have had. If, we've been, if everything's been cut, then that raises more questions about, is any, for instance, is any other centre getting uh, any grants in this yeah, area? Palmerst, no, basically that's the, tr that's the trend. Palmerston North has been cut back to nothing, and we understand that that's the, that's the general approach across the country. The position they were taking, Your Worship, was sort of um, uh, approaching funding like a seed funding to get programs underway and then expect either the local authority or the, or the business community to pick up funding going forward. So that's, that's been the sort of driver for the programs. You, you Worship, we've had uh, programs in the city safe area since the year 2002 um, and I've got a concern about the whole program and the funding because I don't think it's just been seed funding if it's been going for you know more than a decade. So are we going to be able to debate that particular you know the wider context of that? Because um, we haven't I don't recall it being introduced previously. Uh, it's just a line in this um, budget. So I'm sorry, Councillor McPherson, you've lost me here. Well, at the moment we're looking at an adjustment because it's a fact. The funding is being withdrawn, and it's being withdrawn everywhere across the country. No? Well, no, so, no, no. That's not the information that was given. The only information that was given was that that was a trend, and it was being withdrawn completely in Palmerston North. Not what was happening. Well, perhaps I'm cementing it with information that that I know just from reading the newspaper. I, I mean, I agree. My source of information is the newspaper. Um, so that's a it's a it's a fact. It's happening. So that's what we're dealing with there. We're going to, after we've dealt with this section, move on to whether we, in fact, reinstate our, out of our own that. money that budget, and that might be the time for you to then raise a wider dimension about, you know, what, what is the community doing uh, in terms of raising it with the government, given the importance of these, and um, where we are to then hear from the staff as to what regard, you know, what they've been doing in that regard. Cool. Okay. I, I, I'm happy to do that. We should, could I just ask that between now and then staff do get some information a little bit more precise about whether it's being cut completely or it's only in some sentence, for instance? Right. Uh, Councillor Toomey, you had que did you have any more questions, Councillor McPherson? No. no? Councillor Toomey, you had a question? Uh, yes, a follow-up question, if I may, uh, mm -hmm. Your Worship, to Chris, following on from Councillor McPherson's um, question concerning parking. If my memory serves me correctly, last year we were 900,000 under budget with parking. Um, is this what I call on-street parking, Chris, or through parking buildings that we're sort of slipping back all the time? So, so if, I, if I look at the, um, the trend information we've looked at, you look at the off-street, and we off -street. normalise it for the impact of Knox Street, because we've yep. sold Knox Street. Um, Sorry, Chris, did you say off street and Knox street then? Uh, yeah. Off. So we've got oh, yeah, um, okay. parking revenue is either through your metres on the on street or off street in our parking buildings and parking and part spaces. Of off street is Knox street. Yeah, but we've sold Knox street <coughs> and so I, I need to look at the figures without Knox street. Um, uh, but our parking revenue in the off street building is actually going up and so that's because we're um, being more efficient in how we lease spacing and, and we're doing pretty good in that area in off street. Um, the, the revenue um, is on, on street is, is, is slightly on a downward trend. 
So not, not significantly, slightly on a downward trend. Uh, the big downward trend for us is in the traffic infringements area. Um, so look over the sort of five year trends we've got, we've had quite a, um, a, a, a continual downward trend in traffic infringements in terms of registrations and warrant of fitness. So we've looked at that data and struck a, a, an estimate at what we think will be the likely income in that area. Right, just just for scale, so councillors are aware, the overall revenue for parking is around about 5.6 million. <coughs> okay, any other questions on this section? Uh, Your Worship, I did actually have one on the water supply revenue, if I might. Um, so, the first as one. I said at the beginning, Councillor McPherson, before the break, um, you know, you'd ask your questions in one lot, so I'm not going to accept well, If you're not going to allow it, I'll just raise it elsewhere then. Well, you, can, you can do that's that, ridiculous. Councilman, that's fine. I'm trying to get a meeting process that satisfies everyone rather than backwards and forwards with questions. So we'll stick to that, and then you can raise it another session. This is not even an item that's been discussed before. <coughs> uh, Councillor King, did you have a question? Yeah, this is, we're discussing things like shutting down the municipal pools. We're shutting things like fixing the founders. We're, we're discussing a whole lot of things today. We're looking at increasing our spend by $100 million, increasing the debt on the city by over 25%. Mm. If things come up and people need to ask more questions and they're not allowed to, it's not allowed to be discussed, I just think that's, that's poor uh, managing. We, people need to be able to ask the questions. The public need to hear what's going on. And if other things come up after you've asked your set of questions mm -hmm. on such an important matter as, as what we're talking about today, surely you can ask another question. So what I said before the break, Councillor King, given that there seems to be you know, a level of formality needed in this meeting, which I guess I would contrast with perhaps in the past we haven't needed that, but what I've said is let's keep to a meeting process. So. Uh, councillors have had the report, they've had the submissions, they've uh, participated in discussions. Uh, formulate your questions, and I'm sure councillors did that before they came to the meeting today, and then ask them in a block lot. Uh, and if, um, because otherwise we're going to get this backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and repetitiveness, and I'm trying to avoid that. If a clarification is required as a result <coughs> of something someone said, sure, we should pick that up. But I think this is the best way to proceed in this meeting process. And I'm sure that every councillor around the table here has really prepared carefully for this meeting and will know already the types of questions they want to ask. There might be some clarifications required. <coughs> sure, we'll go with those. But I'm, I'm satisfied it's a good process. Well, a po point of order, Your Worship. If so you just are... before you, uh, that, I just want to check, uh, Councillor King, that's, that's my response to, to your, your question about the process. Councillor McPherson, you had yes, another question? I, I did think you, no I didn't, Your Worship, but I oh. did think you, I did recall you saying just before the meeting ended that points of order were not to be interrupted, oh. and you've just done that. Right. Um, my point of order related to an item that's not previously been discussed yep. at, at a value of $390,000 that I believe... And which be item is that? What is that? Uh, in, the, in here, <coughs> you won't allow me to ask a question about. Oh, I believe it is right. very relevant to the finances of the city, right. um, and it's not it's not something that's been covered before. If you don't want that to be done, then to be a, allowed to be discussed right. or even have a question asked, um, the, you know, where else in the agenda does it come up? But, but Councillor McPherson, that's on the basis that you are asking that question. There may be some other councillors who actually have questions and want to ask questions about that. I waited until no one else asked it, Your Worship. Well, I'm going to check now whether anyone else has got any other questions on this particular matter. Certainly in relation to water, we had quite an extensive discussion at the Finance Committee. Councillor Pascoe, I'm looking at you, on this very topic. We, we have discussed the uh, reduced reduction in water uh, over the last three finance meetings, and it should be clear even to councillors who, who may arrive late to meetings and leave early, that this matter has been discussed and it should be a matter of instant recall that the $390,000 has a story behind it and it is quite right that it should be reflected. The point of order there. Loss. Point of order, Your Worship. Yes, what is that? Councillor Pascoe is well aware that I was not at his meeting that discussed this, which was not the last one. It may have been the one before. And, just, and he's just, well aware of why as well. 
just just checking uh, on that because uh, this just... this topic um, CFO I think this topic of the water revenues being uh, subject of reporting to the finance committee which I mean we all get the agendas uh, Councillor Pascoe at, at least sorry. three meetings Your Worship just yeah. clarifying that uh, Your Worship was raised in the February meeting mm -hmm. um, as part of the um, reporting mm -hmm. um, Councillor Mallard I think it raised a number of additional questions mm -hmm. it was reported back in the April meeting mm -hmm. and then um, was summarised again in the May meeting right ok so, thank you so there was no discussion about it, Your Worship, in the May meeting. Um, so no point of correction. So I just I'm just getting clarification. I was there for you, Councillor McPherson, and the CFO has said it was uh, included. In no, you said a summary of it was included. Yes, that's right. So, so it was was raised in the May meeting. No. So in in relation to your point of order, I think I think that's been answered. Um, so. Are there any other questions particularly on this section? Yes, Your Worship, I'd like it recorded that you refuse to allow me to ask a question about the item water supply revenue. Um, look, that, that's fine, um, Councillor. Oh, I'd like it recorded. Yes, no, that's fine. Thank you. Because the minutes will also um, record the um, discussion <coughs> about the, the water. Just can I... Um, <coughs> do you have a question, Question Council? of process and clarification. <coughs> Notwithstanding... And everyone knows why Councillor McPherson was absent from a particular meeting, and I'll address that possibly later. Very new low in this council chamber. Mm -hmm. But let me just move on. This is the 10-year plan. This is, you know, we obviously have lots of meetings during the year, <coughs> but I just want to get a clarification, and I understand around uh, repetition and, and, and going around the park, but it seems to me that surely if we have questions that are specifically Mm -hmm. related to this 10-year plan, mm -hmm. I, I, and I'm not, you know, I appreciate you're in a difficult position as chair. Why can't that be asked here? No, I think, Councillor Gallagher, Just, we're missing the point yeah. here. Um, in the past, it's been reasonably relaxed. Right. And I personally have found that a really good process yeah. myself. Yeah. But it seems from the first hour and a bit this morning that if we continue in that sort of relaxed approach, let's call it, that what we're going to do is just bounce all around the table all the time. And, and that seems very unproductive and also very repetitive. So in order to kind of bring a bit more process to it and picking up that that's going to be unhelpful, I've said, well, let's go for a more formal approach. My personal view, of course, is I would prefer the, the former way, but but I've gleaned that that's not going to work very well from a process point of view and going to lead to frustration, repetitiveness, and really, at the end of the day, we just want to get the information to us, answer the, to, to make the decisions. So what's been raised, of course, is in that formality, of course, we're going to have these issues, aren't we? So if, if councillors can give an assurance that we're not going to bounce around the table, that we're not going to repeat questions three or four times, they're actually going to ask questions that help us make decisions. I'm very happy to have it more relaxed, Councillor Gallagher. I'm simply trying to enable us to make some good decisions. Now, the, the difficulty with that, of course, is it can add a formality, which perhaps all of us really think is not the best way to go. So if councillors are prepared to give an assurance that we're not going to bounce around the table, be repetitive, and all the rest of it, I'm, I'm happy to be more relaxed about it. But it's in your hands. It's your hands, <laughs> not mine. So, um, no, I'm not going to take any more questions. Sorry, Councillor um, Forsyth, on this. So, Councillor McPherson, I'm going to come back to you and let you ask your question because I actually think it is quite important that, um, given that you know we've had a lot of discussion about water, but you feel that you need some more information on that, sure, ask your question. And maybe going forward we might do it on a case-by-case -case basis, given that all I'm trying to do here is ensure that we just have a good meeting process and make some decisions. So why don't you ask your question? Thank you, Worship. And it's, it's not a question about water. It's about the finances yeah. attached I'm, to it. I'm just putting the label. Yeah. No, I understand. I'm Excuse trying to make me the, if I didn't get it. I'm trying to make the point that uh, I'm questioning the finances here, which is very relevant to the N the LTP. It's, it's so what's your question on it? 
I'll wait until you finish your worship. I'm saying, what's your question on it? I was about to start there. It's relation to the negative 390,000 loss of revenue from the client. In the past, and this is probably a question to either Paul or to Chris, or maybe both, in the past we've been told that the uh, water charge to commercial clients is on essentially a cost recovery basis. So I would have thought that if there was a loss of revenue because a major customer was not using water, there would have been a commensurate or at least a partial savings in costs to us to offset against that 390 negative. So that's what I want to ask. Is that the case, still the case, or is it completely uh, sort of a sunk or lost revenue with no <coughs> redeeming uh, lost, loss of cost? Chris may correct me on this a little bit, but well, why, um, why don't we get the general manager to answer it, given that it's a matter of his, you know, in his area, so that you don't have to be corrected if you've got it wrong. I, I, I think, in, in principle, you're right. There's a relationship uh, between the two, um, but it, it's it's um, it's, a, it's about the sensitivity of it. So, look, this is 390. K revenue over sort of eight million, so I don't think there's a direct relationship. If we um, if we don't get three hundred and ninety thousand dollars use, that we'll get three hundred and ninety thousand dollars saving. There's a bit of an incremental sort of cost there. So, in, in principle, you're right. It, it, you know, it, there'll be a reduced chemicals and reduced electricity and all of that, but it's not a direct relationship that we can say for every um, litre. Um, not sold that will say, um, um, you know, a, a, a commensurate sort of um, <coughs> expenditure cost. So my point is exactly that, and I, I understand the incremental argument. Um, we might, that's 5% of our total water sales, let's say, if you can call it sales, um, and we might only have a, a savings of half that or a quarter of that or two-thirds of that, I don't know, but there's going to be some savings, as you yourself have identified, but those savings are not shown here in terms of reduced costs. Uh, you know, for instance, the item below community safety, there's a, <coughs> there's a cost of lost grant, and there's a, but there's a reduced expenditure. So you would think for that particular one up the top there, there would be two lines as a cost, uh, you know, but there's a, there's, sorry, there's a lost revenue and there's a lower cost and it won't be as much as, I under, totally understand, won't be as much as 390,000, it'll be something less than that, but there'll still be some savings, yeah, my, my which are not shown. It would be quite negligible, uh, but I'd probably have to go away and do more work if Need to expand on that, or you might have yeah. the, the original figure was four fifty thousand. This is reflecting three ninety net. Yeah. Um, so it's a net cost. Yeah. Okay. So if that had been explained at the start, I would I would have understood that in that sense. It's just that we're not netting some of the other lines, and we are netting this line. So it's a bit confusing. Mm. Thank you. I apologise for that confusion. Right. Okay. Any other questions on this? No. Right, so I'm going to move um, with the removal of the pooled staff costs. I'm going to take that one out and move the acceptance of the others. Uh, if I have a seconder, and then we'll deal with the pooled staff costs separately. So do I have a seconder for that? No, Sorry, a, 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 a question of process there. Yep. Why are we actually voting on that now? For instance, when on the community safety one, where we have yet to vote on whether that's how we want to treat it? Sure, we're um, accepting that that's the proposition. Yes, yeah, so uh, just again repeating what the staff have said, they said it's a matter of fact that that grant will no longer be available. So this is about an adjustment that needs to be made to the budget because we're not going to receive that money. Well, I thought you said we were be, debating that later. The question will then be whether we as a council fund that ourselves, and that's coming next uh, this sorry. is about an adjustment in the um, financials. Okay. Yeah. So it is coming up again as to whether we fund anything at all in yes, that area. Yes, it is. Okay. Taking yes, everything out, is. and then we'll rebuild it. It is. All right, thank you. Um, and following the staff's uh, request, they are saying, well, with these adjustments, if you could resolve uh, to accept those, that then becomes the base by which then we make decisions uh, to remove or to add from that. 
Have I got that correct? That's correct, Your Worship. Right. Now, I've removed the pool staff costs because, as you identified, that is a matter that councillors can choose to do or not do. Yes, Your Worship. Right. I accept that the water revenue and parking revenue could fall into that, but they're not really related to level of service. They are reflecting changes in the way the business is operating. Have I got that correct? Yes, Your Worship. Right, thanks. So I've moved that um, those um, adjustments be made to the budget. S sorry, Worship Show, just to be clear, that would then mean the increase in surplus would drop from 466000 to 366000 uh, no, because it's an increase in pool service costs, that would actually be 560000 <laughs> Got it right, but 100% the wrong, wrong way around. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Did you say you were an accountant? <laughs> but no good at maths. So that's 566. Yep. Yes. Um, and it's been seconded by the Deputy Mayor. Does anyone wish to speak for or against that? Okay, so we're going to vote on accepting those adjustments. And we'll go to the board. Thank you. Unanimously. Right, the next item is the pool staff cost. Let's deal with that one. So I'm going to move that that be added into the budget. And I'll that's second. going to be seconded by Councillor Forsyth. Does anyone wish to speak for or against that? Pool staff costs. I'm moving that it be added in because that is a matter of discretion. And that's been seconded by Councillor Forsyth. Does anyone wish to speak for or against that? Um, I actually support this, Your Worship, if I could say, but it, it is a bit unusual not to get any um, uh, factual information to underpin it with numbers of staff and things like that. Now, uh, I appreciate the Lance was sort of caught on the hop there, possibly, but <coughs> perhaps for items of this nature, we should have um, you know, a, a bit of a report, really. It should even come up beforehand. I suppose I'm just referring to page 18 where the, the reason or the rationale underpinning it has been given in writing in this report and it's been supplemented by questions to the general manager. It, it, so from you, my perspective, I, I've certainly um, got enough information, but it's a point uh, worth noting. I'm talking about the figures. I understand that the rationale is there, but the figures hmm. themselves, of, you know, staffing numbers, for instance, are not there. Okay. Your Worship, I've Which no pools? noted Councillor <coughs> McPherson's feedback for future um, items of this nature. Right, does anyone wish to speak for or against that motion? Right, we're going to go to the board to vote on it. We're voting, Councillor Wilson. So we are, Your Worship. Carried unanimously. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next item I've got uh, for discussion is the city safe matter, um, where the staff are saying in response to the removal of the grant that um, that budget be reinstated to maintain a level of service oh, that would be funded through um, the revenue that we have. So, Councillor Forsyth, are you moving that I'll that be I'll so? I'll second your worship. And seconded by Councillor O'Leary. Okay. Now, Councillor McPherson, I've got you have some, some questions, questions then in relation to the exact reason for the um, grant being cut out and whether it's been cut out nationwide in all places or just in some centres in the two that were mentioned were obviously us and Palmerston North. Can you answer that, please? Worship, through you, I can't answer in the detail that the councillor is seeking. What I can say is our inquiry, which has just been made again with the uh, Ministry of Justice, across the country have not been renewed for the year going forward. Uh, as to the numbers and specific details and rationale for others I can't comment on and they didn't disclose that information uh, to my staff member. The only other thing they, I can advise is when I received a phone call from the Ministry of Justice advising that ours was being, uh, not being renewed, it was that this was had been given to us as there was seed funding uh, to try out some <coughs> initiatives and if their view was that if these uh, proved to be successful, they had the belief that the council would look to incorporate those potentially in, in, into their... Uh, okay. 
Yeah, I, look, I totally appreciate Kelvin's answer, but I don't think it's very satisfactory information from the Ministry um, uh, for such a substantial sized grant in an area that's essentially their responsibility. Uh, so um, I would have liked to have seen a more vigorous protest from our organisation since it's been highlighted by staff here and by this council in the past that it's a, an important area of council and police work. And in fact, prior to 2002, this was 100% undertaken by police, this work. And now uh, we're getting more and more of it's getting pushed okay. onto us. So yes. without going any further, no. I'm just saying Helpful, what, we're really I, on I want to know what we've debate. done to, to try and mm. restore that or keep it, right. um, and you know, whether we've got our MPs on board, things like that. So, so I can certainly speak in respect of the MPs, because I have raised the issue directly with the MPs, so I can tell you that. Um, can anyone else answer the question about um, what other action we've taken? So I've certainly spoken widely in the community about it because it's been raised um, for about a month now. I know that community organisations have been talking about it. Yeah. Okay, so that's the answer to your question. No, well, Your Worship, you said you could speak about the MPs part I, of it. That's what I said, I've raised it with the MPs. And what was their response? Well, they didn't know about it, Councillor McPherson. Okay, so it was done by the Ministry of Justice without the local MPs in the affected areas knowing about it by the sounds of it? Correct. Okay. based on what they told me. So have we as a council done anything in terms of formally approaching the Ministry or the Minister of Justice um, as a res result of those <coughs> discussions or any other discussions? Not as of yet. Okay. So we're asking the, the ratepayers, or this proposal asks the ratepayers to fund something that we've uh, cut from central government that we haven't even challenged other than verbal conversation that you've had, Your Worship. Is that correct summation? I, I think it probably is. Mm. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Mallet, you had a question? Yeah, just <clears throat> could you just give me uh, some concrete examples of what we're going to lose? What are the activities that will stop? So is this the, the people walking around with the, the high-vis jackets um, Shuffling people out off in front of shop windows and carry on. Is it? No, they're, they're, the grant covered two distinct uh, yep. parts of work. One was the suburban ambassador service, which was uh, staff who visited <coughs> all of the suburban uh, shopping centres, excluding uh, Charlton Mall. Uh, and their, their aim was to engage with business communities out there, particularly accepting that a number were English second language speakers to build relationship with them, to build trust and confidence, uh, and to have a deterrent effect in and around their communities, uh, in the shopping centres, which were otherwise not being serviced or having an attention. Uh, the second one was to have, you, sorry, do you require any more on that? Uh, you no, know, okay, what was the problem we're having in our suburban shopping centres? We, we were getting lot, lots of, of low level disorder uh, feelings of insecurity and, and safety. Uh, there we, we are starting to get some presence uh, of uh, vagrancy or, or begging as we're getting some displacement yep. out of the same central city. Could I follow up on that point, but to ask whether the 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 anecdotal evidence that Calvin's just given us followed or preceded the loss of community constables in the suburban areas? So how long have, have these um, uh, increases in low-level crime, if that's the right word, how long have they been being noticed by your staff, by your unit for, Kelvin? It's how been four years that, that this, this program has been operating for four years. Right. Thanks. OK, so does that answer your question, Councillor? Uh, you, you, except there was a second program you talked about. The second one was the Central Business Burglary and Crime Reduction Project, which was about uh, running the crime prevention through environmental design, uh, and, but engaging with businesses around crime prevention toolboxes, uh, running the Know Your Neighbour campaign between business uh, owners here. Uh, this was the focal point for contact with businesses and having discussions with them about being safer in their everyday uh, premises of how they were operating their business. 
that was covering both the central city and the suburban shops. And it's your advice to us that we should, um, now that the funding has been seeked, but was not coming from the central government, that we should continue funding these operations because they are providing value? I, I consider they are providing considerable uh, value. I also believe that safety is everyone's responsibility. And I believe that we are, uh, my own view is that it would be to detriment uh, if it was to stop. Okay, any other questions on this then? We've got to move it. Yes, you've Just got to, on the sorry, following that. Sorry, the Councillor oh. King, he had his hand up. Sorry. Um, when when have, has this been discussed with the Council in the past, since the loss of this government, central government grant money? You wish by perhaps can answer that. Okay. The loss of the grant occurred about a month ago, so this is the first opportunity we've actually had to have that discussion. My concern is that certain people seem to know all about this, and others of us don't know anything about it. Sorry? Surely, surely this could have been discussed in the last month. I mean, this is really important for Council, and people around this table don't know anything about it up until this report came out. Uh, it was covered in an executive update when it occurred, and then, then uh, because of the timing, it had already missed the finance meeting uh, papers. And uh, but it was a month ago. It was just on a month ago. Yes. Yeah, so, Councillor King, that, that's the answer that it was covered in executive updates. Only been known for a month, and there was a my recollection was there was something in the newspaper. I think there was something in the newspaper. M my concern yeah. is is that uh, yeah. councillors around this table have not been briefed on this, know so, nothing about no, this until until this report came out. Mm. Yes, no, that, that's correct. What uh, You've heard the response on the CFO two occasions. Mm. Okay, so that's your question's been answered. That's how we deal. Yeah. Now the question is, is what do you want to do about it? Yeah. So point of, the, point of order, Your Worship, what, just what, wanting uh, to clarify yeah. that misinformation, I'm trying to do this right. Um, it was discussed at the last SP when Calvin presented a report, and I, as chair of that meeting, um, asked a question and flagged the funding and raised it there. And it was also, uh, in, I believe, in one of our recent workshops, I questioned again. So we had that discussion. So it's been two other times, in my recollection. It was in your chair's report in your s and uh, No, I, I questioned it as the chair when Calvin was presenting under the last, which might have been the safety report update, I believe. In a formal meeting. No, it was s and as well. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, I, I haven't seen a report on this until today. No, and, and no. Councillor A question King, asked in Council. I, I, Councillor King, no, no one's saying there's been a report. No there hasn't been a report on this funding... Uh, withdrawal by the government. No, there hasn't been. Uh, uh, what, what, what I'm trying to point out here is, is this hmm? seems that people around this table know a lot about this, and there's other people, hmm. people around this table who aren't privy to any information about this before this. And, uh, okay, so. It, it's very. <laughs> so, uh, so um, I guess, yep, you're saying you want more information. What, what additional information do you need? Could, could you ask your questions about the stuff you'd like to know? With Calvin here. Well, my concern is this is about the safety of our city, and right. So what's we're being asked today to vote on an extra 120,000 people, which I don't think anybody around this table sure. dollars. I don't think any around this, anyone around this table would disagree with. Right. But it, it appears that there's people around this table who know a lot about it, and there's others who have no information about it. And I, I'm saying a, a, a circulated report about what happened a month ago would have been good. Uh, okay, right. I, I think that point's noted. It disappears sure as some of us aren't in the loop and some of us are in the loop. Well, no, I think, Councillor King, let's be clear here. Um, Councillors know, well, they read the newspaper. I'm pretty sure I've read something about the newspaper just personally. Uh, and it's been in the executive update. Uh, and Councillor O'Leary has confirmed she, she raised it. Um, as part of a, a question she had. But no, there's been no report, and that's that's the information we've got. Uh, as part of the budgeting process, it's absolutely imperative that staff put that before us. There's a budget adjustment, because we've relied on that grant. So we've dealt with that. The question now is, is what do we want to do about that? 
Now, what we've heard from Calvin <coughs> is this is what it relates to, this is how long it's been in place, and this is the phone call he had. Calvin, to satisfy Councillor King, do you have any further information about this other than a phone call from the Ministry of Justice? There was also a letter received uh, by the Chief Executive from the Ministry of Justice indicating the same. Right. That's the extent of the information being provided. Right. Okay. Mayor Julie, I think my point is yes. I shouldn't have to read what happens in this council in the paper. I shouldn't have to go to the newspaper to have to read what's going on. I, I, we, sh we should be briefed. When things like this come up, it should be circulated. Well, I think Your Worship, sorry, yes. we were also uh, briefed at the latest B&I Investment Subcommittee from Calvin about this funding, and I asked a question then, and Councillor King is on that committee and was at that meeting. Right, thank you. So, Chief Executive, do you...? Yeah, um, so the purpose of the Executive Update is to provide um, information to councillors of relevant facts that have occurred, and we try to bring them through to the, soon, the soonest uh, and possible committee to have them discussed if they were on that. Um, by the sound of it, they have been um, discussed, whether there was a formal report, we're not saying that. We're saying they have been discussed in context of both the BNI and at the Strategy and Policy Committee as well. Right, not too sure what more we do. I think Councillor King's saying a full report would have been useful. Um, point taken. Um, uh, could you make a note again that perhaps that these sorts of reports need to be, you know, every item needs to be a full report. That seems to be a, a theme this morning. I, I see you waving, everyone. I've just got an order here. So that covers Councillor King. Um, now, I had Councillor Gallagher, you had some oh, questions? Yeah, look, us? I mean, I think <clears throat> I won't. I, I think um, whether the totality of the issue should go through to Leo's committee or the community forum, because if this is, <laughs> relates to community council as a whole, swack of our interaction with the New Zealand Police, and if we'd had a sort of perhaps a, a different committee structure, in my view, it might have been better. But putting that aside, I think what we do want to get out of this is one, obviously, a special report which is separate from this budget. We're only talking about the, a funding allocation today, but I certainly would ask when we uh, vote on this matter, we, we do, um, if you like, write to the Ministry of Justice and ask the, the, the the exact details of that decision, all right? And what I've picked up and very concerned if, in fact, they didn't even tell their local members of the parliament, uh, then we should be joining the MPs to, to give them a whack around the ears big time because it's absolutely unfair because, uh, I mean, I would have thought there would have been some interaction. It seems to be... So, but, again, I'm, I'm just trying to work out through... So I think there's an alloc budget allocation, but it may be helpful either at a later date, that we do actually investigate the circumstances of who, where and how the decision process was actually made, uh, that may be a, for another report. Um, OK, know. so I think the question out of that, which I think actually has already been answered by Brian Crowe, and that was that this had been signalled some time ago. Did I hear you correctly, right. Brian? Yes. We, as soon as we received notification from the Ministry through the executive update, we advised Council. No, but I think you were saying... Maybe I heard you wrong, but I thought you said that this funding or the withdrawal of it had been signalled for some time. Yes, so Did I hear that right? Yes, they have been. For a long time, the um, ministry people have been te telling us that their budgets are under review in Wellington, and we'd actually done quite well to have uh, hung on to funding. So. Right. It's, there's been pressure for uh, funding reduction in this area for some time. Right, so, so Councillor question, Gallagher, you're... Allowing, um, and I apologise if I have a viral so, and, and, and... So not, just not... your question, have you got a My, my question? question simply is this. Yeah. If we were given uh, a long-term notice, mm -hmm. why are we discussing this item in, in, in yeah. a budget? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And why would, did we not receive an earlier report mm -hmm. around exactly the, the circumstances of this anticipated uh, removal of funding uh, and, and, and the consequence things we would have to do about it, plus yes. our opportunity, presumably, to, to lobby our MPs and Minister uh, yes, so, for reinstatement. Uh, General Manager, can, can you um, answer that? I mean, does well, it just not, come out of left, the decision yeah, just come out of left Yeah, I can't really field. say much more than, than perhaps in retrospect we could, we could have got a lot more active in terms of trying to put pressure on, on the Ministry, but... Um, <laughs> Did, did, did you know the decision was coming to withdraw the funding? No, we, we didn't, and we've, we've said that a number of times. Did you the, just get a phone call? Worship, I received a phone call advising that, uh, which was what I used to generate the, 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 the notification okay. with the executive update, right. and then that was 
So you didn't, you, I mean, the phone call just came one day, kind of thing? There had been nothing to do earlier okay. on. All right. All right. Sorry, so I think that kind of covers a little yeah, bit of yeah, what you're so, saying. So I just, yeah. I just point, of, point of order, Your Worship. Yes. In answer to your question before to the general manager, it appeared that we'd known it was coming for some time, and, the other, and then there's a contrary answer that we knew nothing about it until it came out of the, the phone call came out of the blue. So I'm not sure what we did and didn't know. Well, let me be clear that um, for the past years when we've sat down and been advised by the Ministry of Justice, they have always indicated that there's pressure on their budgets and they're always being looked at and we have a very good relationship with Hamilton City Council and you have secured your funding. So that's the background to it. Well, was this particular, <coughs> these particular two funds were we told they were in jeopardy? Was that just a general... Everyone knows every government department's budget's under threat. I think that's what um, the, the general manager has said, is that um, we were indicated that they're always under pressure, but there's no specific identification at that point in time that we're going to cut the funding until we received a phone call through Calvin and then an official letter following that phone call to myself. And there was no consultation? There's no consultation. Right. So yeah, it is what it is. Well, I, what, I, I want some gripe because it seems to me you know, this budget issue, we, we sort that, but I, but I want to flag somewhere that we would, I think it would be very useful in our current committee structure that there was a sort of, if you like, uh, an overall report um, that actually dealt with that. <coughs> and I think that the broader issues around the closure of community constables and, and the changing of policing, and I think <coughs> this... this dovetails in, but the fact is the matter of, of the sort of the random phone call, and not even, apparently, uh, the government members of MPs weren't even given the courtesy by their own officials of being informed, um, and, and I realise it's probably outside the scope of this meeting today, but so I think it's really useful that we could point, pick that Councilor up. Gallagher, okay. given that we're mm. trying to focus on questions, yep. Yep. Um, yep. I believe, Councillor O'Leary, that we're due for a safety plan update report coming through September right. um, into your committee, which of course will pick up, picks up City Safe and all of that as well. So um, staff should need to make a note of, of the comments. All right, so we've got a move in, and a seconder. Uh, sorry, I debate. had to indicate well, I, the question I, before. I also question. had a question too. Sorry, apologies. So okay. Councillor Pascoe, yeah, go. Thank you, Worship. Uh, my question is um, perhaps directed at Kelvin following the explanation that he gave. Does it mean if we reinstate this 120,000 that that Hamilton City Council will, over the course of a year, write a cheque out to the New Zealand Police for that 120,000 to provide those services that you outlined? Mm -hmm. No, the, the, the staff are currently who perform the service under the Ministry of Justice grant have been contracted by Hamilton City Council to provide that service. So the police don't go out to the suburban shopping centres. It's 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 an it's an engaged. I'm sure the police do go to the suburban shopping centres at times, but but in relation to the performance of the functions associated with this grant, no, they are Waikato Security Service staff contracted. Okay. To the okay. Understood. Thank you. I Right, so Councillor McPherson, you... Yeah, it was just a asked. question arising out of Councillor Mallett's earlier. I just want to know what the total budget was. Um, with or without the 120,000 for City Safe at the moment. Um, in other words, what are we putting into City Safe right now and presuming we'll be adding 120,000 to that for next year if this goes through? Uh, currently, it would be 602,784 dollars. That's rough. Split between one, two, three, yeah. five different. Uh, actions arising within that. So, and we'd add 122 to that with uh, this. That's included. Included. In that yes. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so we moved and seconded. Anyone want to speak for or against? Here's Councillor Mallet. I speak against this not because I'm against the program, I speak against it simply because um, 
there is clearly insufficient evidence uh, or information for, for councillors to make a decision. I think it's something we should put on the back burner and uh, decide on this one a bit later on. Um, I'm not even, you know, I would like to know uh, what we would lose if we lost $120,000. I would like to know the results of the current program. Is it working? Is it making any difference? Um, and I don't think there's any need for us to make a decision on that in today's um, meeting, given the lack of information and the confusion around the table. Councillor uh, McPherson? Yes, I'd like to speak against the resolution as well. <coughs> um, and I echo Councillor Mallett's points and would like to add a few as well. Firstly, I think the, the process for making this decision is poor. Um, to just load it on us at the last minute and expect this to go through there without any prior discussion about either the finances or the um, the actual service that's being provided or not being would not be provided if this wasn't there. I mean, there's no discussion for, as to whether we could redirect some of the funding that goes elsewhere, which is all council funding, the other 480,000. Could that be rejigged so some of this could be covered by that funding without going just a, a full replacement 120,000? I think we're on a very slippery slope if just because government cuts funding we suddenly say we'll replace it 100 per cent. I can see that there might be a case for some replacement, for re some rejigging of our budgets. I think it's very poor management just to say, give us that same that the government took us off us before. When this program started, it cost the City Safe program, it cost $200,000 a year. We know that because it was part of a deal between some count the majority of councillors and the chief executive at the time. Councillor um, uh, Wilson down the end remembers it well, fondly in fact, because I think it got him a committee chair position, um, that deal. <laughs> but uh, that aside, that was what it cost and there was a huge debate in council at that time as to whether we should be funding a job that the police had previously been doing. And we very reluctantly agreed that it needed that city safety needed to be something we should spend some money on because the police weren't doing their job, not in terms of the individual police, but the overall police program. When I look at the figure now that Kelvin tells us, it's now three times that amount, or it will be if this goes through. I don't think um, that we're getting three times extra service. I think what's happening is that we with our city safe officers are replacing the police that the taxpayer used and government used to fund. And at a certain point, you have to stop doing that. Now, people may have different views on what point that is, but I think that they've passed my threshold. I, I voted for all the previous increases in city safe funding. Um, I didn't vote for a grant to another police program from two or three years ago because for the same reason, and I'm not going to vote for this now because I believe we've been asked to do too much, to replace too much lost central government service here. Um, it's not a question, similar to Councillor Mellon, it's not a question of opposing us, uh, opposing the city being involved in this area. It's, it's saying that, in my case, there is a role for central government there. They should not be abrogating that and dumping it back on city councils. They are the first, as we all know, to criticise city councils for delving into areas that are not their responsibility. And here is an agency of theirs pulling its funding from us and saying, if you want that work to continue, you, you fund it completely yourself. I think that that's... It would be, we would be sending the wrong signal to central government and the wrong signal to our community if we just go for a, a full cost replacement there. I could have worn putting some money back in there and some changes in budget, and I would have expected our management to come to us with a proposal like that, saying, look, guys, we're in a cleft stick here. We need this work happening in this area. This is how we think we can handle it within an existing budget, but we really do need some extra. This is not that exercise. This is just saying we've lost 120 from government. Give us another 120 to replace it with no real justification, which comes back to um, the point um, that Councillor Mallett raised. I would have thought something like this could easily have been formally discussed at the last Strategy and Policy Committee meeting in terms of the level of service we required. The finance of it may have had to come straight to you or go via the Finance Committee, but neither happened, and it's just been dumped on us with very little information at the last minute here. Added to that, we've got a situation where 
it seems like we just accepted, apart from one discussion that the Mayor had with uh, local MPs, we've just accepted as a council that the government can do that without protest. We don't even know whether they've cut the same program anywhere else in the country except for Palmerston North. I mean, uh, where there's been plenty of other cases of government programs where Hamilton's been poorly treated, social housing and cycling are two in recent minds, where we, other places have got funding and we haven't. Is this another one? I would like to know that. I'm not prepared to vote for it until I do know some of these facts. And I think councillors, just I'll to accept it. something Thanks, like this, would be, you're going too far, too fast. That's the end. Okay, any other for or against? Councillor Matt, said, you've already spoken. So I just a point of order. I, I would like to, um, just a or point of clarification, I would like to delay the decision. Do I no, move an amendment or just vote it? decision, you would have to um, move an amendment if you want to delay I'd, it to I'd, okay, I'd like to, to second win. an amendment then, please. Just, just flesh it out. Uh, well, I'd take advice, Ms. Daff, because... Uh, how long it would take you to get a report that told us what what this thing what this program did, uh, what's costing? Just we need to know so what, what's going what on. I think what you're suggesting, if I can paraphrase your council monitors, you're saying defer it until the 30th of June when it comes back for final decision. Is that possible? Unfortunately, your worship, that's not practical because we would actually have to either make the choice to include or exclude in time for the audit on the 15th of. Uh, but, but let's be real here. Surely you can signal to the auditor. Um, hey, this one's in the parking lot. <coughs> but, but it just... No, just let me finish here, surely? Or is it, is, or is it that precise? <coughs> I, I think, Your Worship, it is that precise. OK, all right, good. Can I just suggest... So then, OK, so, so it would have to be out of the 10-year plan, and then we just, as we do every day of the week, add it in uh, because we make a resolution of council. That's great. Then we would have to just simply have to resolve fresh that, OK, we want to spend $120,000, as we do with all the time. Yeah. Or, or okay. the alternative is you put it in then remove it out. One way or another, you've got to make the decision. To... Yeah, well, I'd suggest we put it, put it I'm out. A, I'm a put it out rather than put yeah. it in, Guy. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I Others would be different. I think then it's, as a democracy manager, to pick up on Councillor Mallett's point for guidance here, it's a vote against, and then if that becomes the decision, then it can be introduced later. Is that covering off what you're saying? Sorry. So I'm just trying to assist you yep, yep. about what you'd like to Thank do. You. I'm seeking advice from the, to pass an I, I'm talking to Councillor Mallet about yeah. it and seeking guidance from the democracy manager. My goal is to not not commit $120,000 spending when, when, in my opinion, and I, I, I respect other people might have more knowledge about this than I do, in my opinion, the councillors are not well enough briefed to make this decision. So my goal is to stop the spending, stop the commitment, uh, and, and I'm very happy to put it back in again subsequently when we're properly briefed. What's Madam, the process for Councillor Mallet to, to realise that? Madam Chair, I think what I'm hearing is a procedural matter being raised by a member. We've got, we've got the meeting has got a motion before them, moved by Councillor Forsyth, seconded by Councillor O'Leary. So there's a motion before the meeting. The member may vote against the motion, the members may, or a member who has not, not spoken, spoken. Yes. which rules Councillor Mallet and Councillor McPherson out of, of moving a procedural motion, may move a procedural motion to defer this item to a future meeting. Sorry to just, just to ask, that, but my understanding from Paul is that deferring this stuffs it up in terms of audit for the... Um, from a, from a 10-year so, plan perspective, yeah, yes, that's yeah, correct. Yeah. So from a 10-year plan perspective, we need decisions made you need today. Certain, you need certainty today. We need certainty today, today so and that, that we can uh, provide that information to the auditors in yep. time for their audit to be completed yep. so that on the 30th of June we can bring it back. You can't go to the audit with something hanging around. This might or might not Un be Unfortunately yep. not. Yep. Point of order, Your Worship, surely on the 30th of June, or when we have our meeting to finally confirm something, there is a democratic ability to change even if it does mean some fast footwork is needed in terms of working out sums. I don't think that's a point of order. That's well, a, uh, it's a question. No, no. I think I, it's a question. So what's the answer to that question? Your Worship, uh, as part of the striking of the rates process, it's my understanding also that um, the Council has to adopt the 10-year plan in its final form, um, including having had that audited. So uh, the difficulty would be in having that audited 
Well, I'm sorry, Your Worship. The meeting uh, uh, program says final LTP meeting or some words to that effect on the 30th of June. And I think um, at least some councillors have approached this meeting knowing that there's one more um, formal process to go. I, I mean, I, I mean, Councillor McPherson, you're, you're a councillor who's been around this table for a long, long time. So Too you long. would be very, very familiar yeah. with the process, mm -hmm. auditing, what's required, because you've probably been through this process more than anyone else around the table. And there have been um, changes, Your Worship. So, uh, so you well and truly know the <coughs> process. So I'm, we're just getting clarification here. Paragraph 74 on risks sets out the requirement yeah, to make well, decisions. Well, I think we're about. waiting, Councillor Pascoe, for staff. At the end of the day, they are the ones that are supposed to advise us what the position is. What's the answer? Sorry, um, sorry I was just trying to understand the process. So it is, a, it is a practical issue in terms of the 30th of June, in terms of on the 30th of June, if we make a change, we're going to get those changes reordered to the whole set of financial stations up, statements updated. We've put us under pressure in terms of our rate strike and so forth. That's what um, the CFO was explaining. Um, if Council doesn't wish to include in the 10-year plan, we don't include it today, it doesn't get audited, and then at some stage later on, that's an alternative, after we've adopted the 10-year plan, Council can make a resolution to include it at that point if they chose, so chose to do so. It wouldn't necessarily be part of the 10-year plan, it would be a decision made during the period to increase the budget and would report in that respect. It effectively would go on the risk and opportunities, wouldn't it? That's it would, correct. It would be a decision made by Council subsequent, oh. which is now increasing expenditure by 100. Yep. If, if we had decided to can it now yep. and, and put it there. Yep. We're trying to get as much certainty, acknowledging sure. the final 10-year plan isn't signed off till the 30th of June, we're trying to get as much certainty today, because as you understand, the 10-year plan documents and supporting evidence is quite detailed. We want to make sure that we have everything tied up and all our T's dotted and our T's crossed and our I's dotted to ensure that when we finalise the report and strike our rates, we're completely buttoned down and correct. In the interest of moving things along uh, and yeah. getting certainty, I'm, I'm happy to just re not do the amendment and just you vote can't against do the it. Amendment. Pardon? No, yes. Oh, I can't do the amendment, can I? Because I've Look, spoken. Uh, yeah, yeah, and there's no need for extra comments. As I said at the beginning, just let people speak and then you get your chance. So, yeah, so Councillor Manit, you're just. You've, you're clear yeah, well, I, I, I now understand what okay. the, the, the imperative to get the thing right. done today. I, okay. I do understand that. Now. You, okay. Your Worship, is there a resolution actually written down that we could have up there? I, I appreciate one's been moved, and I know generally I don't know. what it is. It's asked for the democracy manager to do it to assist us. Okay, now I had Councillor Tooman down to speak for or against. Councillor King has been well. Councillor King's going to be next after that. Okay. 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 Yes, Your Worship, I wish to speak in favour of the motion. Mm -hmm. I think what we have to look at, of course, is. Uh, Twelve months ago, if you looked in Garden Place, you could see the issues which the community here were facing. And as a result of the People's Project and um, another other initiatives which have taken place within the city, um, it is now quite a pleasant environment to actually uh, travel through that area. When we look back as to the issues which were um, as a result of Councillor O'Leary's cannabis, um, what do they call that stuff? Psychedelic. Psychedelic. <laughs> and what we did as a community, I think, is we started to mobilise the community to um, put safety before them. It's a little bit like if we take the foot off the throat, what's going to happen, of course, is that these things will return. And I think we will be uh, looking at the environment which was existed down here in uh, garden place approximately 12 months ago. <coughs> when you look as to the part which the city here plays in community safety, we have the, um, the People's Project which is up and running. Uh, we have our city safe. And I know we probably don't see the community constables as they were known, but if you travel around the city here during lunch times and that sort of stuff, you will actually see <laughs> Um, constables walking the beat, which you didn't see, say, 12, 18 months ago. And um, I know from experience that they now have a commitment uh, where they must actually walk the beat within the city, in the CBD area. So I think it would be foolish to um, remove this funding because that would mean that our city safe ambassadors who are out there 
and creating a very high profile. And it has taken a little bit of time for them to actually get established within the community. Now that they are established within the community, I would like to see them stay there. So accordingly, I will be voting for the motion. Thank you. Any, uh, Councillor King, you're speaking for or against? Uh, I'd like to move a procedural motion. Uh, oh, right. Thank you. What's that? Um, to, defer this in council, uh, to defer this matter until councillors have been briefed. Defer it to when? Until councillors have been briefed. We haven't been briefed. So, so We've had no report. No, no, I understand the language. I'm talking about fixing a time. When, when uh, could that be deferred to? Because I think it's useful to have um, resolutions that fix time, mm -hmm. because then people know what dates they've got to work to. So I'm just looking at staff. What date could that be that could be added to the procedural motion? If it could go to any number of committees, really, it's just mm -hmm. uh, Next what, what, whatever one Next suits finance, council, preferably or? one with full membership. Right. Yeah. So strategy and policy or Board finance? Attending. When are the dates, please? The finance meeting is the 23rd of um, July, I believe. I think, to be clear, if it's deferred outside of the, the this yeah. meeting, mm -hmm. um, then it won't be, it would not be adjusted in the 10-year plan. So, um, okay. So um, deferred to the next finance committee meeting because it's a budget item. I think the effect, uh, to be honest, my, my point is, is that I want to be briefed, and there's people here who know all about this, and there's others who don't, and I just want to be briefed. I don't care about the date. I don't mind if it's tomorrow. But we just want to be briefed. Yeah, no, no, I understand. It doesn't need a date. We just need to be brief. This, everyone around this table needs to be on the same page, and we're not at the moment. Okay. I'll second the, um, the amendment of The next finance meeting, I think, is... I think. Okay, so we've got to move on to the procedural motion. So Could I just, just make sure that everyone's clear the impact of this, of this motion is um, vote in favour, is effectively we, re we do not include a budget for this amount in the 10-year plan. Uh, point of order, Your Worship. Uh, on that point, um, I don't think the Chief Executive is correct, and I wish to say why. Um, because, as he himself said before, for practical reasons, obviously you try and have everything done now so that you can audit it and get the publication done. But for in legal and democratic reasons, we don't have to make our final decision until the last day of this year. And uh, it, it, it is fast footwork, uh, and I'm not saying it's going to happen, but you have to reserve the right for it to happen, if you get what I mean. It, OK, to, be, yeah, to correct it, it makes it more difficult to achieve it. Yeah, yep. 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 fair. So we have a procedural motion to defer until briefed, seconded by Councillor Wilson. Um, so, Councillor, do you wish to speak to that? Uh, point of order, are you, we allowed to speak to a procedural motion? No, yeah, yeah, just the mover. No. I'm going to ask the democracy manager. Democracy manager, what's the answer? No, Your Worship, the, the procedural motion is put. Right, so we deal with that right away first. No so, just so that I'm clear, sorry, to um, we, we um, interrupt the process and vote on that. Yes, and right. deal with the procedural motion. No, so we interrupt the process and deal with it now. Yeah, is that a yes? Okay. Yes. All right, so we're going to vote on the procedural motion, which is to defer until briefed. I do have a... Sorry, Your Worship, but I have a point of order here. The, well, I uh, don't know, I'm just following no. the democracy manager's advice. Yeah. So I'm if it's go going reason. off standing orders here. Right, democracy manager, you need to be listening to this because... The in-standing order... Right. Uh, 3.11, which is un covers procedural motions, is a note at the end that says the procedural motion may only be moved by a member who has not already spoken the matter in the debate. Councillor King, the mover is not entitled to the right of reply. Now, that implies that they are entitled to speak to it, but not to have a second go, as in a normal motion. What's, what's the answer on that? <laughs> That's a good, that's a good I, point. <laughs> Councillor, I, I have only experience of procedural motions being moved, seconded and then put to the meeting. 
So I would say that the mover and the mover and seconder, there's no discussion on a procedure mm -hmm. motion. Your Worship, it, it, when you read the that section of the standing orders which governs how this meeting runs and for procedural motions, it does not say that the mover and seconder don't have the right to speak on it. It only says they don't have the right to have the right of reply speech. Yeah, no, look, I'm sure the words are right. I'm, I take the advice point of the one, democracy point manager. One, point two. Well, so I'm asking for your advice. I, I would oh. stick to my advice, but if standing orders are ever not oh. entirely clear, then the discretion is always with the chair whether or not they would um, rule. Can you say that? Right. Could I ask that the oh. chair then read that section of the standing orders for her own sake so that this is her decision because she's yeah, no, no, I'm going to make pieces. a decision on it. What number is it? Uh, three point one one, Your Worship, on page twenty-three, and on to twenty-four. And can I suggest you also have a look at Appendix D? What page is that? Kat? Appendix D, page sixty-four. After C, before E. Pretty clear. No discussion. Where does it say that the speaker can't speak? The, the mover can't speak? I think the chair's uh, reflecting on that at the moment. It only Thank talks you. about whether there's a right of reply or not in terms of speaking. Of, uh, same as the actual standing order. In fact, it even refers to speakers in another part. No, is, dis is discussion in order? No, no, no. That's discussion, but... Uh, the procedural motion is discussion in order. No, no, no. no sure, the, sp the mover of a procedural motion has the right to speak to it. it Otherwise, people don't even understand what the procedural point is most of the time. Entirely new not to allow that. Okay, so my understanding is the practice here is that procedural motions are not spoken to. Um, my recollection in, in being in this uh, role for the last five years is that that has been the practice. And so I'm going to adopt that as the practice to interpret what the standing orders say and there won't be debate on it. Because when you look at the substance of 3.11, it is clear that it is a section to be actioned to bring to a halt what is going on. And it's clear on its face. It's distinguished between a normal amendment and a procedural matter. So there won't be any speaking for or against. I'd like my objection to your ruling recorded in the minutes, Certainly. please, Your Worship. Yeah, no, that's fine. So we're now going to vote on the procedural motion. Sorry, no, I'm not going to have any questions on what I've said. N no, not on what you've said. It's about the motion I'd like to understand. Excuse me, no-one's allowed to speak once it's been put unless it's a point of order. No, she's, she's, she's uh, seeking just clarification yeah. on Some the problem. wording, so let's well, just... Well, it's on the so board. No-one else is allowed to speak. Yeah, no, no, Councillor Payne. I understand. I, I, what, we want to make sure that people understand what they're voting on, so that's why... Let's just that's have a look and see what it says. Is there I a think date there was no deferrals to and any time. It was that? just to be briefed. So, can so I, can can I no, no, I'm not going to listen to anyone. I'm going to Councillor King to make sure it's written as you would like it. And, and Councillor Wilson, make sure you it's the way you would like it written. Do you want to put a date? Yeah, we'll, we will put a date on it of we'll, bef we'll, before the 30th of June. Prior to the Okay. Council Wilson, okay? Right, we're going to vote on that.
procedural motions carried seven right. votes for six okay. against. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next item uh, is we're going to move into the major things. I know that the staff have included the Hamilton Waikato Tourism Grant, but that is actually included in Attachment 2 in the uh, section we're going to deal with later. So we're going to move into the major themes, which is Attachment 1, page 12. Your Worship, sorry, just uh, not trying to interrupt, but what's your time scale for lunch and visit um, <coughs> so that I can attain a meeting? 12.15. 15, thanks. Until 1? What do you want? 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so this is on municipal poll. So who's speaking on the municipal poll? You're not, I'm sure, Deputy Mayor, speaking on the municipal poll. <laughs> I am going to speak on the municipal Well, I I'm actually going to hear for the general manager first to introduce the topic. So just... Um... Same with you, Councillor Geller. Let's let the general manager settle in, <coughs> talk to us about the municipal Gordy, pool, Gordy. and then we'll move, as, as is customary, yeah, customary yes. practice, one would call it, <coughs> where then we're going to listen to the general manager, ask the appropriate and useful questions, yeah. and then move sure. into a decision. Oh, thank you. Okay? Great. Um, through you, Your Worship, um, I know a number of councillors were at the... Um, the various meetings with um, submitters and uh, sink or swim people came along to the one at the uh, St Andrews Church Hall and um, put forward a very comprehensive submission which um, is in your pack of submissions. Um, look, I won't go through that. There was quite comprehensive information that was put forward um, and there's also been a number of uh, uh, other submissions from um, submitters, either as single submissions on the pools issue or as part of uh, wider submissions on the whole LTP. Um, the submissions you'll see from the report were generally split between uh, the proposal um, for permanent closure of the pool um, versus um, keeping the, the pool open. There's been a number of suggestions from some of the submitters about um, uh, the provision of aquatic facilities um, throughout the city. <coughs> um, uh, some of the people who are pro the municipal pool said that it's an integral part of um, a network that we need to provide throughout the city. Um, I think no one's doubting that um, the information that's come from the regional um, sports facility strategy that th uh, there is need for um, further um, swimming facilities throughout the city with the growth in numbers and something we discussed just previously around the pool staff costs was the pressure coming on our current facilities and which has been experienced for some time and um, also since the closure of the municipal pool um, a few years back. Uh, essentially what the regional sports facilities plan has talked about is um, uh, two 25 metre pools, uh, one in the um, probably the life of the LTP and then one towards the end of the life of the 10 year plan or just um, beyond that. Um, and taking into account that some of the need is, is cross-boundary rather than just um, for uh, the residents of Hamilton City. Um, obviously, that report, which has um, been carried out by Sport Waikato, takes a more holistic um, view right across the Waikato region. Um, I, I won't labour it, Your Worship. I think it's um, reasonably clear. We felt as staff in um, going through the submissions that um, generally there hadn't been... a uh, a lot of new information put forward. I think there have been um, a bunch of information which was uh, brought forward again. Um, this council and the previous councils had numerous reports on uh, the municipal pool, its current state, um, engineering reports, um, what would be needed to uh, reinstate um, an outdoor pool and other options such as a, um, a, a new indoor pool, etc. So, um, I'm confident the information that we've put forward from um, engineers and consultants is, is the best information possible. Um, some of the submitters have, um, in their submissions, have uh, had different views on uh, some of the information that's been put forward, but I'm confident that um, 
we have given the council the best information um, uh, that we have at, at, our, at our fingertips at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll leave it there, Your Worship. Happy to answer any questions, um, especially technical ones. And I've got uh, Dee McManus Emery and also Matthew Bayless, our swimming facilities manager, can help out with those as well. Okay, thank you. So, Councillor Gallagher. Just, um, I, you will have read, and I notice and uh, formally note the uh, letter from Catherine Bukitina, the Sink or Swim Committee in the Waikato Times today, but also from Councillor Lois Livingston, Regional Councillor, um, which has been circulated, I think, to all councillors today. Do, do you have any comment? She does raise issues around the process, and she says um, uh, basically, um, I am very concerned as our sink or swim with the bias of the staff report to council. And I, I'm just reading this I'm, this morning. I can only hope that all councillors have read the submissions carefully. As we, the community, did not get the opportunity to speak to our submissions and answer questions in front of all councillors, as should have been the case for a document as important as, as the long term plan. So I'm, I'm really, uh, I, I'm not. Obviously, you, you, I respect your report, but again, it comes back to the process here, given the significance of this, because I can't recall when, in fact, in our in our process, when in fact these groups have spoken to all councillors. Do you have any comment on her? Yeah, I mean, obviously, she's questioned the process. You know, given the fundamental importance, this is a very important decision in terms of the LTP. Um, through you, Your Worship, look, I haven't, I've only just seen mm. Lois Livingston's letter now that Blair's given me. Um, about process, um, uh, I think Blair outlined at the start of the meeting um, what the process was for people. Obviously there's written submissions which all councillors have got. Um, there's been uh, the, the series of community meetings that we've had um, and there's been obviously a bit of um, debate and discussion this morning about how successful that process was, and obviously there'll be a review of that going forward. Um, I, I'd say there's been a lot of interaction uh, with um, people who are interested in this matter for um, probably four years now, at least four years since I've, I've been at Council. Um, there's been um, other sub, um, submissions and um, uh, put forward through previous annual plans and LTPs, and there's, there's even been community meetings, which I think Councillor Chesterman's attended in the past, and Councillor Forsyth and others, um, including uh, my staff. So um, I, I'm confident that you know uh, the um, people who are interested in this matter have had um, as much opportunity as possible to put their case forward. Okay. Any further questions on this matter? Your Worship. Yes. Uh, just a, a quick question regarding, um, and I just can't find the reference in the documents I have in front of me. Could, could the general manager just remind me the amount in the budget to shut it down permanently? Six hundred. So six hundred or seven hundred. Uh, it's about six fifty. Um, that's for demolition and clearance of the site. And then ongoing was ten. Oh, there was if if it is, if it's left how it is now, and I'll just have to refer to D just to get clarification on that. There was a small sum of money per annum for. About ten thousand dollars for um, some weed control and making sure the fencing secure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So just on Councillor Wilson's question, so currently it costs around about ten thousand dollars a year for it to be closed and left as is. Have we got that correct? That's correct. And then uh, there is a, <coughs> an estimate if it was to be demolished and removed, which is about six seventy. Six hundred and seventy thousand. Right. Right. Uh, that's that is not in the draft LTP. No. So this is a decision about whether uh, to make a decision to permanently close it. That's correct. And then, um, as I read all the reports, the decision about then what, if that was the decision, that would be a further discussion that would be by a council. Proper investigation report and decision at some other stage. Is that? That's correct. But an indication of 670. Yes, whatever. That's just an. Uh, is that a guesstimate, an estimate, or a. It's an estimate. Mm -hmm. um, until you go out to tender on these sorts of things, you can never get, you know, absolute, absolutely right. defined costs. Okay. And, and also, is that dependent on what happens to the space if the decision was to close it permanently? Uh, that's correct. So, oh, depends yeah. what maybe the potential future use of it is okay. as well. 
All right, fair enough. Are there any further questions for the general manager on this matter? Yes, yeah, Councillor just McPherson. Look, I've, I've seen figures that talk about future recreational swimming and competitive swimming needs across the city. I'm not sure whether they've we've been able or anyone's been able to divvy them up into you know who would use a pool in central city and what the needs are going forward as opposed to city wide. If you get what I mean, Lance, is there anything in that area? Um, if you're alluding to the, the different market segments, you're talking about lane swimming. No, uh, no, no, I'm talking about who would make use, both lane oh, okay, and right, um, right. You know, in the central city, as opposed, for instance, <coughs> to the northeast. And um, generally, um, you'd have similar use for a municipal pool versus, say, another 25 metre pool at Waterworld or one in, in, at Rotatuna or whatever. Um, and depending on what the configuration of, of of the pool would be, so it's got to learn to swim small part, and then it's got a 25 metre and sure. that sort of thing. And depending on the depth too, because there's different okay. depths for um, uh, people who are training for international class swimming versus who are just doing regional type swimming and that sort of thing. So so that, so there's a there's a bunch of use from casual use through to water sports like um, water polo, those sorts of things right through to um, people who do lane swimming, either for just you know general fitness through to people who do club swimming and that sort of thing. So it's, mm. it's, um, the swimming space is quite complex because there's a number of different mm. users. Um, we haven't done any definitive surveying about if there was a pool in the CBD versus mm. one at Waterworld or Rotatuna who would actually use it. No, we haven't done that sort of analysis. Mm. But the rule of thumb is what you're saying, uh, a pool in this municipal pool area if it's not even if it's not exactly that, would get approximately the same use slash demand as one elsewhere in the city. Um, forward, I think with the if you take a global picture with the pressure we have on swimming space, I, I think yes, um, but it would depend on the the type of facility and that sort of thing. Um, the information we're getting, the recommendation from um, Sport Waikato, is that a covered facility would um, be more preferable because you're more likely to get it used during the, the colder parts of, of, of the um, uh, during the year. The When the Muni pool was going, it was partially heated, or heated, and it was being used through winter, wasn't it? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. But was still obviously not covered. Yes. Though it was sheltered in terms of wind and things. That's correct. Yeah. Um, okay, thanks. Just, um one of the submitters, or the uh, boys' high school, have made a submission about, um, you know, use and community use and available for schools. And uh, I think that someone told me the other day that the boys' high school are now moving on, <coughs> doing some upgrading around their pool. So, do you have information about that? Because one of the uh, certainly um, in the engagement sessions. I think um, probably at least three engagement sessions uh, of the ones that I attended, all of them, spoke, you know, there were representatives from Sink and Swim who came, so there was a multiple sort of discussion every time. But one of the issues they did raise, which I thought was a valid issue, was about use, you know, the availability of the pool t for the surrounding schools for, you know, learning to swim or, or whatever, or their school sports. So what's happening with the boys' high school? Because their submission speaks about picking up that. So. Um, so boys high at the moment, and I was out there the other day, um, they, they've been upgrading, they've got an outdoor pool which is a six lane pool, 20, 25 metre, they've put a, um, a bit of a bulkhead in so they can have learned to swim at one end as well. Mm. Um, they're doing some quite extensive upgrades to the ancillary facilities around it and also put in a new plant around heating the pool um, throughout the year. Um, so that work's happening at the moment and I think they've got Livingston's contractors in there um, that I saw on site. So they're looking at um, extensive changing facilities, they're looking at um, some seating 1,500 to 2,000 for students. Um, the information they've provided and the discussions we had the other day was that they would be looking at um, you know, providing their school pool for other schools to use for their sports and that sort of thing. Um, they've got a relationship with a swim club. Um, and the thing uh, which they put in their submission, one of the, one of the matters which um, I think you alluded to and some of those other um, uh, other organisations in the report that have asked Council for funding for yes. certain things, yes. um, 
they've actually asked of us, us for some partner pool funding, which we do with <coughs> several organisations throughout the city at the moment in summer months. Um, we've just, our discussions are is really just uh, trying to establish um, how much community use there would be available. So, so school use, yes, they're definitely in, you know, Marion School next door and those sorts of things, mm -hmm. they're very much open to that. Um, obviously they'll want their school use first. Um, and the other thing is then um, our discussions with, with Matthew and his team is just around how much community use there would be. Uh, we haven't firmly established that yet. Uh, we've just been trying to define that. Um, to be fair, it probably is limited, but I think you would find that with any other organisation's facility that you know their needs would come first. Okay. But they are they are very much looking at trying to look at a community partnership around that pool. Yes, because that's what I sort of read from what they wrote, and uh, someone was talking about that the other day. I can't even remember where I was, but they were talking about making that facility because they're upgrading that facility quite considerably. Is that yes? So they've got a whole proposal, um, not just to upgrade their current outdoor pool. They've got a proposal to put a 25 metre indoor pool next to that one, right? And to also put in a new hockey turf, right. artificial hockey turf, and they've been dealing with Midlands Hockey. Um, Declan Wyndham Smith, who's a CEO, has been um, having discussions with them and also putting in some artificial tennis courts as well, which is just to the north of their current um, court area. Okay. Um, the thing they've been talked about <laughs> is um, potential access through Beale Street too. Right, to that okay. facility. thank so you very Submission much. Submission 51 has a picture of that um, yes. proposal. Yes. Your Worship, I have an amendment that I'd like to throw into the... Right, so we're not amendment. quite at that stage because we don't actually have a motion yet. Um, but I'm just checking if there's any further questions. Oh, well, in which case I'll move a motion. Right. Yes, there's questions, Councillor King. Um, this question's for the Chief Executive. Um, in the email that we received this morning from Lois Livingston, it says, <coughs> I, and I, I'll read it again for parity, I'm very concerned as I sink or swim with the bias in the staff report to Council this morning. I can only hope that all councillors have read the submissions carefully as we, the community, did not get an opportunity to speak to our submissions and answer questions in front of councillors, as should have been the case for a document as important as the long-term plan. Now, when you go to the, to the document that was circulated for the public for consultation, um, under option one, it, it reads, right investment, right time. Um, which is obviously, out of the three options, has a staff have put a bias, or we have put a bias on option one by stating our proposal, right investment, right time. And then when you go over to the municipal pools, um, it talks about permanently closing the municipal pools. Mm -hmm. um, what my question is, is around our process and the robustness of it with these this information coming to light at this late stage, do you believe under judicial review mm -hmm. that the processes that we have followed are going to stand up? Yes. Thank you. Right, councillors, um, so there's no more questions. I think we're adjourned for lunch, and when we come back, we'll deal with the matter. So we are, um, we'll be back from lunch at quarter past <coughs> one. You wish if I've got a motion to move when we come back. Yes, yes, no, I've got Thank that, Councillor Wilson. You've got to pass it on to the democracy manager. In fact, I've, I'm going to email it to her right now. Technology, so mm -hmm. Don't sound so... I am. Well, it's funny, I put the thing in here, press a button, it turns up over there. No, at this stage, I'm just asking, do you under, is it clear what the motion and amendment are? And then we just need to get some questions answered by the staff. So what has happened to the original uh, recommend, the motion and the recommendation that the pool be closed? No, no, one's, no one's moved that. Okay. But I thought that uh, Councillor Wilson was moving an amendment to that motion. No, and that was no, what he because signaled you can't move an lunch. amendment to a motion if there's been no motion. And I said to Councillor Wilson, there is no motion, so his is the motion. So mine Thank is the motion. motion. So can, now that people under, are clear about what they mean, I just need to get a couple of questions answered. Could we just have, um, from the Deputy Mayor, can you please clarify when did you intend, the, what year did you intend the <coughs> 4.5 million to be? 
put what year of it? Because we need to just get some financial consequences answered here. Well, I can only answer that with another comment. And if you're prepared to take that now, it will give some context to what I'm saying in my amendment. Well, is it in one year or spread? Um, I would be inclined to put that in in the next three years. Right. That will give the trust, uh, whatever the trust might be, the opportunity mm -hmm. to take our level of support mm -hmm. to the philanthropic trust mm -hmm. and say, this is what council's prepared to do. Mm -hmm. Can you support it? Probably up to eight to nine million. Right. So it would be spread over th three years. That's right. And Councillor Wilson is yours for the next financial year. Correct. Right. Okay. So, CFO, <coughs> can you just give us some consequences of those from the financial perspective for the budget? May I just ask one question about uh, Gordon? Does yours suggest? I think with um, Ewan's proposal, the City Council will still own the munis, but I'm not sure with yours. You're talking about a trust. Does that mean the City Council puts in five and a half million, and then the trust raises the money and owns what's what's there, or not? Your Worship, I'm talking about a fundraising trust, a bit like a right. Friends of Hamilton. Only Garden. a fundraising trust. Yeah, this That's is only about still... raising the money. Oh, okay. Still owned by the council. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So financial consequences. Your Worship, just a just a question of clarification, mm. if I may, possibly through to the Deputy Mayor. Um, when the, the 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 matter of the municipal pool was raised through the submission, some of the submitters talked about um, if we refer to our option two advancing the money set aside an option two for the new pool, noting the new pool um, isn't yet absolutely certain as to where that will go, and that money being substituted, advanced and substituted for the municipal pool. So I'm just wanting to clarify, possibly is that the intent of the, uh, the Deputy Mayor's suggestion, or is this additional money on top of the $4.8 million for the new pool that we currently have? And, and I think um, that probably applies to both Councillor Wilson and uh, the Deputy Mayor. Is this and substitution for what's at the back end of the budget in relation to a pool. Can you answer that? Um, I suppose the reason that I don't support the uh, motion is that the money's not enough. And I think we should be realistic and not set a trust up uh, to fire. I support the North East pool. As well, no question about that. But I support a number of other things in the 10 year plan that are not proceeding because of the <coughs> debt cap, the no, so called so, debt cap. So, so you're, it's, just remind us again, Blair, which um, we, we'd allocated out some money what year? So, we'd allocated money in, in, in 2023, which I think is year yeah. eight mm -hmm. of the budget for a new pool, not the North East Sector pool. The North East Sector pool was outside the 10 year budgets. That was in the infrastructure strategy in the years 11 to 15. Right. So there was a there was $4.8 million set aside for a pool possibly envisaged in the water wheel complex, but yet to be finalised in year eight of the budget, and that was $4.8 million. Yeah. Uh, in option two of the consultation document, we identified that an option would be for those, that money to be brought forward, and we, we identified that as an option uh, for the public. I know that some of the members from Sink or Swim and other, other advocates of the municipal pool, when questioned, um, suggested that that money could be brought forward, such as option two was referring to in the consultation document, and be applied to the municipal pool complex. In instead of, at instead water of a world. water world or other type pool. And being very clear, the North East Sector pool was always separate money outside the 10 year plan. Okay, so. And I'm arguing that that money at Waterworld yeah. should be used in the North East because I believe the North East has greater priority. So this is new money? Th th this is more about what I would like to say once... Right. But it's paper. New not, I haven't got a second or so, it's academic, really. Okay. Councillor Wilson, did you uh, have any is, view on that? Mine is new money capped at the 670000 right. Okay. And All right. I strongly disagree in terms of the quantum, I believe, we can yeah. get a pool for about $4 million. Right. Uh, and I'll speak to that. Yeah, no, when we get to that. We're just clarifying things at the moment. All right, new money from both sides. Is there a seconder for the Deputy Mayor's amendment? Yeah, I'll second it. So Council Forsyth is seconding that. So can we just have some yep. um, money. some indications of consequ financial consequences? Thanks. Thank you, Your Worship. Just taking the substantive um, Can we put it on this motion no? first, um, yes. we will put up the uh, 
projections, but the um, effect on the balancing the books budget in year one would be to reduce that down to around about three hundred and fifty million thousand uh, dollars as a surplus for the balancing the books. So, so, so just to make that clear, it's still balance the books, but with a smaller amount. That's right. We're just pulling the charts up so that that can be seen. These are slightly different colours, but uh, the total debt. Balancing can you the speak books. in the mic? Thanks. The balancing the books um, remains in surplus across the 10 years, and you can see there the um, difference that it's making to the base information. The base information there is what is in your papers, and then the yellow bars are what we are now sitting at, given the changes that we made this morning as well. So I suppose, look, Your Worship, can just, I ask no, a just, question? Just, on, it's just a, it's a simple thing that we want to know. Um, what consequences do each of these options have on the budget? So for the balancing the books one, for Councillor Wilson's one, we still balance the books, smaller that, amount. That's correct, $358,000. Right, and that flows on through. That's right. Deputy Mayor's one? Yes, we, uh, for the Deputy Mayor's one, we've assumed that this will be um, carried out in year three. Um, it is a substantial refurbishment, so it's capital, not operating costs. Your Worship, could I just point out, municipal pool, if it was to be a standalone pool, would cost $200,000 a year net to run. Yeah. Right, so yes. So if you did that from, it was been <coughs> through to year three, then year four <coughs> onwards, you'd have to put 200000 into the operating. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying in my proposal that we're going to no. fund the ongoing running of oh, okay. the pool. No, I think um, you just, I'm, you've I'm just I'm really out what the operating yeah, costs would be mm, approximately yeah. net. It's, it's a one-off. We yeah. think we need it. We're prepared to put some money towards it. It's mm. a public-private. You go out and raise the funds, you run it. Yeah, I think it's just, just making sure that everyone understands it's a flow-on effect if, if we operate it. So, Your Worship, assuming that um, the um, refurbishment that's referred to in the Deputy Mayor's Amendment comes in in year three, which is 2018, then debt would increase in that year by about $4.5 million, and the net debt across the total would expand so that in 2020, which was the year that we were due to reach 200%, that would be at 202%, um, total debt would peak at $499 million in year 2024, and we would finish the 10 years at 174%. So just to clarify, um, at the moment, uh, with the draft uh, budget, the debt to revenue ratio of 200% kicks in in 2020? That's correct. What does that, that do? This would move it out to 2021. <coughs> 2021. <coughs> right. Okay. Does uh, <coughs> Councillor Wilson's one affect that ratio? It would be a capital um, spend. Yeah. One we, we would still hit 200% uh, in uh, 2020 on the count, Councillor Wilson's. Councillor Wilson's one would be um, more likely to be an operating cost, though. Yep. More likely to be an operating cost? That's correct. Yeah. Why, why is that? Because it is a contribution, a grant towards the refurbishment. Mm. Right, as opposed to, to, cap to, to the the capital investment. Capital yeah. Right, yeah. of course. Yeah. 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 Right, okay. Yeah. So there's lots of conversations going on. So so what I might do, I'm just wondering whether we should take a five minute break for people to gather their thoughts and if there's any other questions. Are people okay about that? Otherwise, because various questions, conversations going on, I want to make sure everyone's right. Are there any other questions people have about the information so far? And then we'll get into some other. No? I've, got need... some, I've got some questions to ask, but I'm right. happy to wait to a five minute break. Okay, so I'm just checking, <laughs> do, Deputy Mayor, do you need to have some more conversations about your amendment, or are you right? Um, my second has asked me whether I would consider reducing uh, the amount of money down to 2.5, mm. which would bring it into 
uh, the cap period. Mm. Um, but, it, but again, the challenge then is that the trust, depending on what the end project is, and it could be anywhere from six to 8.8 okay, million. Okay, yep. So what I'm going to do is, because there's a variety of conversations going on everywhere, we're going to break for five minutes while people have those conversations, all right? And, and uh, then we're going to come back, all right? And in the meantime, can you get your figures correct? Thank you.